So then after that, what did you, you were only like 17, so did you go back to school? No, I was very lucky that Cameron McIntosh, he, he, was, he was one of the people who did see it, and um, offered me Ebony. So I went back and... Oh wow, back. so you had like one minute to be depressed and then right into a job? Well, I, I kind of, I suppose I wasn't depressed, but possibly um, slightly scarred by the experience, I would say. I would, yeah, of course, but then, but still, to go into a lead role in a big hit show, did it totally... Yeah, I mean, it, 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 it was you? amazing, it was amazing that um, I was kind of picked up and sort of brushed off and said, no, no, it wasn't your fault, and, and here you go, here's a, a, a chance of a lovely job in the West End. So I was very fortunate, but um, but it was quite a traumatic experience, Karen. Oh, I believe it, know. for everybody involved. Yeah. <laughs> for me, too, because I had tickets to come see for my, my college graduation, and by the time my tickets came to be the close rate, so I'm God. still yeah. really devastated. <laughs> so, but like Miz, at that time, that was 1988, so that was like, it was super hot at that point. Yes, it was, it was quite, quite a hot ticket, yeah. I mean, it was amazing, and it was amazing that for my first West End job, to be sort of playing a part that was already iconic from, you know, Francis's, you know, portrayal of it and it was just a uh, it was the, the the dream job to have you know i just saw sarah Vargas because i went to see phantom and she was like Lindsay hit he was in late with me i was like oh like fontaine to Ebony. she was fontaine you were madame Tenardi. yeah when did you become 70 years old well, I, it, was, it was quite an amusing uh, thing yeah i mean i sort of sticking the black teeth on the, the lines and all the rest of it it was all right i mean it was weird actually it was all right it was a bit weird it was a bit weird going back 25 years later. Playing Ebony's mother. Playing Ebony's mother. I think, I think I'm the only person that's played both parts. And uh, yeah, it was, it was a slightly surreal experience. And with the whole time Ebony was singing, were you like, here's how it actually goes to your <laughs> mind? <laughs> well, there, there is a story which I, I have to tell. Um, I basically, we were sort of in the, um, the dress rehearsals and you can hear the show sort of being rehearsed in, on the tannoy and I'm sort of sticking my lines under my black teeth thinking, oh, this is what it's sort of come to after 25 years. <laughs> and um, and I was, my ear just kept listening to all the Eponine stuff, think, you know, thinking how it was. And uh, and there's one bit where Eponine runs to the gates and goes, I'm going to scream, I'm going to warn a bit. And she part. screams and she screams. And, uh, and I just didn't scream, I thought that's really, really weird. So the next day I went to the sound guys, I said, you don't mind me asking, you know, the, is the Eponine scream still recorded? And he said, yeah, Lindsay Haley. I've been screaming at Les Mis for the last 25 years. <laughs> But it was two years after it opened, so then all the time Ebony screams when they find out to you, they're like, that's the Listen, perfect one? I had done Carrie. I was going to say, there's not some screaming in Carrie. There, there was a lot of screaming, and by the time I got to do Ebony, I was, I got my screaming to perfection.